In this episode, I'm going to guide you through the proximate preparation for receiving our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Proximate preparation begins from the moment you leave your door, traveling to Holy Mass, whether you're walking or driving. When you leave your door to go towards the church, the proximate preparation has now begun. As part of this preparation, your journey to Holy Mass ought to be sanctified. It ought to be a time of prayer, reflection, or at the very least, a minimization of all worldly distractions. If you have a long car journey to get to Holy Mass, this will require some degree of sacrifice, but it's certainly necessary. Your journey towards Holy Mass is part of your preparation for Holy Communion. It needs to be sanctified. Once you have arrived at the church, from this moment try not to speak to anyone. Try to go humbly to a pew in the church and to remain kneeling. By making the effort not to speak to anyone before Holy Mass, you encourage others to prepare well for Holy Communion. Try and be in the church as long as you possibly can be before Holy Mass, but at the very minimum, make sure to be there five minutes before Holy Mass begins, in your place, kneeling down, absorbed in recollection. Follow the Mass interiorly. Kneel for as much as you can. Everything in the Mass use as your preparation for Holy Communion. The I confess, here renew your sorrow for sin, so that you can be free not just from sin, but from all attachment to past sins. This way you will be disposed to receive a plenary indulgence. The readings, the Old Testament reading, reminding yourself that God who worked wonders for the people of Israel today comes to you. The New Testament, seeing here the same Jesus who speaks through the gospel and spoke so intimately to his followers, today desires the same intimacy with you. Perhaps it's best to sit during the sermon, but if what the priest says fails to edify, at least spend time praying for this priest, who through the words of consecration will bring our blessed Lord to the altar, regardless of how good or holy he might be. Pray for him, this weak sinful man, who will bring to you that most precious sacrament, and without whom your salvation would be very doubtful. It may be that you wish to follow the Missal. It may be that you prefer the Rosary or a Book of Prayers. Most important of all is that you prepare an intention for your communion. Do not go to Holy Communion without something that you need to lay before the Lord. In Holy Communion, the Lord is not there for his benefit, but for yours. So prepare well your list of intentions or single intention that you're going to lay before the Lord in the time of Holy Communion. No Holy Communion should be wasted. This is an interview with your Lord and Master, a time before the throne with the King of the Universe enclosed within your breast. If you had an interview with the Queen or with the President, I'm sure you'd had well prepared a list of things to ask for. In Holy Communion, make sure to do the same. Keep custody of your eyes. Look at the altar. Look at the crucifix. Do not look at those around you. If you need to, bring some holy cards with you and place them on the, the chair in front of you so you can focus on them at moments of distraction. Or bring with you prayer books so you can read them to keep your mind focused on prayer in preparing for the moment of Holy Communion. As the moment approaches, as the canon of the Mass continues, as we reach the Our Father, at this point, at this point make acts of faith, hope, love, and above all, acts of sorrow for sin. Eventually, you will need to rise from your knees and approach the altar rail or the procession for Holy Communion. At this point, make your last prayer an act of contrition. You are truly unworthy to receive your Lord, but by this proximate preparation, you will draw as much fruit as you possibly can from the Holy Communion. The hungry he fills with good things, he sends the rich away empty. As you walk forward to receive Holy Communion, make acts of desire, of longing, hungering to receive your Eucharistic Lord. It is in proportion to your hunger and desire for Holy Communion 
that you will receive graces at the moment of Holy Communion. St. Teresa of Avila teaches that one Holy Communion is sufficient to make a saint. Through a devout preparation, this Holy Communion that you receive today can indeed bring you to sanctity and establish you more firmly in sanctity. One Holy Communion is sufficient to make a saint. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.